We all know what is the situation we are dealing right now. Ambulance lining up outside the hospitals. Some are lucky enough to get the bed while some are left choking outside the hospitals. And many are giving up on life due to insufficient and improper medication. The situation during this COVID-19 may sound scary. But luckily, the medication for this disease is not so complicated. This can be mostly done in our home itself. And only very critical cases needs hospital admission. Don't worry, this video covers the full medication for both the cases. And I also help you to treat patients by setting up oxygen at your home only. Which is basically the same thing done at the oxygen beds in hospitals. A lot of effort has been put up in making this video. Even the one person's life is saved by this video, I will consider it successful. In order to start the treatment, you basically need two main things. First one, pulse oximeter. This is a small device which is clipped to the finger to measure the oxygen saturation and pulse of the patient. This only cost about 1000 rupees which is easily available at your local medical store or you can get it online easily. The second device is the thermometer to measure the patient's temperature. Once you got these two instruments, you are good to go. First and foremost, open all the windows and place the patient in well ventilated environment. Next, the treatment basically involves measuring three main things every six hours and providing medication accordingly. The three main things are first, the oxygen saturation (SpO2) reading from the pulse oximeter, and second, pulse from the pulse oximeter. Third, temperature from the thermometer. While measuring, please be careful and don't confuse the oxygen saturation with pulse. On the device, the number with SpO2 gives oxygen saturation, while on the other hand, the heart symbol gives the indication of pulse. Measure the oxygen saturation and take two readings every single time. The first reading while sitting, the second reading after a little exercise. Just a walking few steps is enough or just sit and stand and just take the reading. If oxygen saturation is above 95%, you don't need to worry. No hospitalization is needed in this case. Just take these multivitamins, inhale steam just to clear your throat, always stay hydrated by drinking plenty of liquids, eating healthy, taking protein rich foods, doing a little exercise or yoga is mostly sufficient. If you have fever, take paracetamol every 6 to 8 hours depending upon the fever. That's it, you will be good. But if the oxygen saturation is below 92 to 94 percent, continue to monitor oxygen saturation, pulse and temperature every 4 hours at rest only. Continue all the above steps and stay well hydrated by drinking plenty of fluids. It is always recommended to consult a doctor at this stage. Just a phone call or a video call with the doctor can be quite helpful. To help the patient in breathing, inhaled steroids can be given like budesonoid twice a day 800 mcg. To inhale this, you need a spacer which looks like this. It is basically used in asthma. By continuing above steps with utmost care and providing the above medication or medication given by your doctor time to time, patient condition can be improved. Now, if the oxygen saturation is below 92%, at this stage, if hospital bed is available, I recommend patient to be hospitalized. The medicines and steroids should be given at this stage are dexamethasone 6 mg per day or its equivalent steroid which are prednisone 40 mg or hydrocortisone 150 mg or methylprednisoline 30 mg any one of these can be given it is always recommended to consult your doctor before giving these because for the diabetes or people with previous health conditions your doctor may advise an alternative medication next while sleeping patient should be maintained prone position which is nothing but sleeping upside down that is sleeping on your stomach while your back facing up. Sleeping in this prone position is a very simple and scientific technique to increase the oxygen saturation. This video will show you how important this is. See the oxygen saturation level when I was sitting it was 95 and below 95. As soon as I lie down in prone posture it's currently 93 and start deep breathing. I've been doing just observe how it changes rapidly pronal breathing it is not recommended for the pregnant and people with spine injuries it is better to consult your doctor if any patient also needs oxygen supplement try to arrange an oxygen cylinder at home you can use oxygen masks or nasal cannula nasal cannula is just a tube like device that goes into the nose it helps in oxygen flow from the oxygen cylinder to the body oxygen flow rate should be maintained at 2 to 4 liters per minute remember nasal cannula can only hold up to 2 liters any above will need an oxygen mask if patient still feel breathless 
you can go up to 6 liters per minute if required. Maintain this as long as the oxygen saturation of the patient remains above 92%. When the oxygen saturation increases, the patient does not feel breathless anymore and the respiratory rate will go below 24 per minute. This is the indication of improvement and continue this till the oxygen saturation increases above 96%. If unfortunately this doesn't happen and the oxygen saturation falls down below 90%, it is most recommended to get the hospital bed if available. But if the bed is not available, continue the same treatment at home. Give the same amount of drugs as mentioned before. Oxygen flow rate can be increased up to 6 to 10 liters per minute. Keep giving the steroids and maintain sleeping in prone position during the whole time. Again, keep administering this medication till the oxygen saturation increases above 96%. And it's quite worth noting these drugs are not useful. Previously, these drugs are used for treatment. But in recent case studies and the papers published stated that these are not useful anymore. The main drug in this list is Remdesivir, which is proven to be no use for the patients in general, but it is only used for the patients in specific conditions by the doctors. This drug also plays no role in reducing the mortality against COVID-19. This is only given to the patients with specific cases at specific conditions by the doctors. There is no reason holding or buying this drug in black market in the situation where patients do not need this. Don't try to get this drug unless your doctor advises. By doing this, you are reducing the black marketing of this drug and this drug may be available for the patient who are really in need of this drug. Other than this drug, the drugs which I mentioned previously will surely help in treating the patient. Last but not least, please do not get the vaccine when you are suffering from the infection. Always remember that vaccine is not a cure, it is just meant for prevention, which just involves training your body how to react when the real virus enters into your body. To put this in simple words, vaccine is just a practice test before you play an actual match, which stimulates and train your body to play an actual match on the ground. I will be making a separate video exclusively about vaccines, which contains which vaccine you should take, what is the best time to take vaccine, what are the precautions and measures you need to follow while taking the vaccine, I'll try to explain as simple as possible. I am myself not a doctor, but I am a survivor of COVID-19. All the steps and medications in this video are done after with consultation with number of doctors and a lot of research been done behind this video. The motive of this video is no patient should suffer with lack of proper medication. So please like this video. The more you like, the YouTube algorithm will show this to more people. Please share this video with your family and friends so that they will be well prepared for the worst case scenario. I hope this video is helpful. As I said, a lot of effort has been put up in making this video. Even if one person's life is saved by this video, I will consider it successful. Thank you for watching guys. See you in the next one. Stay home. Stay safe.